Hello teachers, welcome back. My name is Jessica Ellison. I'm an HS teacher educator and I'm here with Ami Naf, an exhibits researcher from MNHS to bring up another incredible woman in Minnesota's past who fought for voting rights among other things. And this is one of my favorite people from Minnesota's history. And so without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Ami to talk about Nellie Francis. Yeah, so Nellie Francis, just like an incredible Minnesotan. She founded the Every Woman's Suffrage Club in 1914. And this was the only black woman's suffrage organization in Minnesota. So Nellie Francis knew that voting was just one of many civil rights denied to the women in her community. Her reach was nationwide. She chaired the press department of the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs and was active in the NAACP and the Urban League. She counted Booker T. Washington, Ida B. Wells, and other civic leaders as her friends and supporters. So she's really this huge presence on the scene. Um, Francis and other uh, ESC members attended the Minnesota Women's Suffrage Association Convention in 1916. She believed that working with white suffrage organizations uh, was important and she enlisted white women to champion the causes of black women. This was a controversial stand that cost Francis allies because the national suffrage movement was segregated and often as a tactical move by white leadership. Racist statements and actions were commonplace, but Frances followed the path of her aunt Juno Frankie Pierce, a Nashville suffragist who employed similar techniques. Uh, and with the passage of the 19th Amendment in 1920, the ESC became the Every Woman Progressive Council. It was dedicated to the promotion and political promotion of political and economic equality and the social justice for black people. The EPC offered leadership training and celebrated the successes of local black men and women. So even when Nellie was working so hard for women's suffrage, she never stopped speaking out about race issues. And on June 6, 1920, just months before the 19th Amendment was ratified, three African-American men, Elias Clayton, Elmer Jackson, and Isaac McGee, were lynched in Duluth. Francis had traveled widely and knew that other states were passing anti-lynching laws. And so that year, she started drafting one for Minnesota. And on April 21st, 1921, Francis's bill was signed into law. Wow. What... What an amazing person um, and a person of her time too. I mean, if you think about all of the, the barriers that she was breaking mm -hmm. as a black woman in Minnesota, but just as a, a, a woman in general. And I think it's really interesting to think about the intersectionality of Nellie Francis before that was a term that we all used and how that was so controversial because the national movement was segregated. Mm -hmm. But I think her anti-lynching work is also so critical to talk about. If you're talking about Ida B. Wells in classrooms, and you should because Ida B. Wells is incredible, let's also talk about Nellie Francis, who lived in St. Paul and brought the fight against lynching to the Minnesota State Capitol and yeah. was successful in 1921. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a really great story that connects to a lot of other work that Black Americans were doing at the time. Absolutely. So, Nellie Francis, everyone. She's incredible. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks again for, for joining us. And if you want more information, you can visit the Votes for Women website at mnhs.org. So, thank you so much. Thank you.